Welcome back to Blackout, House of Bob's cyberpunk adventure set in the Vantal Megaplex, powered by the Sprawl RPG system. Hi, my name's Tiz. I'll be playing Gene Slacks. He is a lawyer who recently lost his wife. Yo, I'm Bunk, and I'll be playing B-U-N-K, the foreign exchange student. Hi, I'm Olivia, and I'm playing Cynthia Slacks, college student extraordinaire. I'm Garrett, and I'll be playing Cecil Slacks, the much, much older senior citizen. And I'm Jake, your game master. Blackout is made possible in part by listeners like you. To support the show, visit patreon.com slash the house of Bob. Roll on. In a brightly lit workshop, the hulking mass of Blunderbuss Bailey sits on a reclining chair. They stare emptily into the middle distance, one hand absently playing with the chain of metal dog tags that hang around their neck against their bare chests, which is covered in scars from gruesome-looking injuries and poorly healed surgeries. The other arm lays still at their side, and a panel running from the wrist to the inner elbow is open, revealing the complex mechanics of their cybernetic arms. Sitting beside them on a stool is Nickel, wearing a surgeon's mask and hairnet. Nickel grabs one of the many tools dangling from hooks above the chair and leans in close to the open arm, making fine and delicate adjustments. Nickel grimaces as she reaches a section of burnt-out circuitry. You've been pushing yourself too hard, Bailey. You need to learn to take it easy sometimes. Bailey nods and Nickel sighs, knowing it's a pointless argument. Bailey has always been stubborn and taciturn, but ever since they were deployed at the tether together, things have been difficult for both of them. The potent and recklessly mixed cocktail of combat drugs, steroids, hormones, stims, and mods they were fed barely nearly fried Bailey's brain. Nickel continues her work, quietly talking to her reticent companion. I heard it's meatloaf in the cafeteria today. Do you want to go see a movie this weekend? The new drone cop is out. I dyed my hair yesterday. New color, do you like it? The room goes quiet for a few silent minutes before an alert pops up on a wall-mounted screen. It's from their boss. There's a job to do. Before Nickel even has time to finish reading the message, Bailey has risen from the chair and begins heading out the door of the workshop. Nickel watches her partner leave before removing her mask, and for a moment we see the bitter and mournful expression on her face before she dons the well-practiced, cheerful demeanor of an epistolic PR rep. The camera pulls back through the workshop window onto the street outside the lofty dark glass towers of Epistle HQ, much too tall to fit into the frame then weaving through a dizzying stream of traffic past the dense thicket of buildings and lights that is downtown Van, before the city begins to thin out, eventually giving way to the relatively less developed suburban region of Median, where the original Greater Vancouver and Seattle areas grew into each other. In the distance, tracks of farm columns built dozens of layers tall could be seen with the mountains of the Cascades behind them. Scattered throughout the region are a number of self-contained communities, all unique in design, and we focus in on one of them, built like five flat ovoids stacked precariously on top of each other, the bottom half of each dome dull silver with frosted glass tops. A floating AR billboard near the entrance reads Applewood Terrace from Tranquility Resorts. The no in front of the vacancy flickers on as we head inside of the domes where we see the glass is clear from the inside and the sun beams onto a methodically arranged grid of hundreds of identical white homes with faux brick accents. Punctuated by occasional but regular parks and public buildings, carefully placed to provide optimal coverage. In one such carefully landscaped park, we see a gathering of 20 or so people. They carry disposable plates of hot dogs and potato chips, stand about the sangria dispenser refilling their plastic cups, laughing and chatting with their neighbors. And I'm going to start with a very important question for you guys. Which one of you is manning the barbecue? (laughs) Cecil. Absolutely, Cecil is manning the barbecue. So that's why everything's burned? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just thinking, like, your character wouldn't be very good at barbecue. Why? No, no but he didn't insist upon it. Okay. Out of pride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as the patriarch of the family. <laughs> yeah, and he would just describe everything as, like, charbroiled. Right. Yeah, it's not burned, it's charbroiled. Black and crusted. Yeah. <laughs> So Cecil slash Garrett is standing at the barbecue. And what does Cecil's deal? What does he look like? 
Garrett with uh, a slightly grayer wig, but with a lot of hair. That's it. Perfect. It's and a, a fresh <laughs> pair of slacks. No, not even. <laughs> no. <laughs> you bring shame to our family. <laughs> it's his regular pants, but they're kind of dirty. They haven't been washed in a little while, but like oh. the whole trip here. Wow, you're really good at being undercover. Yeah. <laughs> I think you should barbecue inside. But he's already got his magic tracksuit that makes him uh, stealthy, so he gets away with it. Stealthy doesn't mean disguised. <laughs> it's different. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You know how, like, if you see somebody in a, in a goalie suit and they're, like, just in the city, you still see them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Garrett, you had engaged one of your previous contacts to try to get a little bit of information about this Skip Tracer game. Which yes. you guys have gotten yourself into. Why don't you roll a hit the street to see how well it goes? I'm going to give you minus one on this roll, and I'll explain why in a minute. Because you're a dick. That is an eight. So the person that you look up is named Cass. He is a former Skip Tracer competitor, one that actually did quite well for some time before getting caught up in a doping scandal. Oh, wow. Which, as a drug dealer, you may or may not have anything to do with that. Um... <laughs> That, that might be how you know no. him. It might not. Probably. Yep. Afterwards, he lost his sponsor, who was QuickBox, and they basically are after him for a huge breach of contract settlement. So are we, like, still cool, or does he, like, blame me for this? That's up to you, I think. But Okay. I mean, he took the drugs. Yeah. That's right. He asked you for the drugs. You provided them. That's right. All I did was sell the drugs to him mm -hmm. and give him a free sample when I first met him. And call him Cass Money, even though he told me many times that it made him uncomfortable. <laughs> you get the feeling during the conversation that he's a little more hesitant to talk to you. And with a little digging during the conversation, you get the feeling that this is because the last person that helped you out got splattered across the inside of a car. Right. Oh, that's gotten around? Yeah. Oh, good. But you still succeed. So he's going to help you out with information. You can ask him whatever questions you want, and he's going to fill you in. You're barbecuing and you're going through in your head the things that you learned from him. But you do have to choose two of the consequences there. Oh. And I think you only pick one of those. Don't you have an ability that makes you better at this? I believe so. Yeah, deal of a lifetime. When you hit the street to sell something and roll a seven to nine, choose one fewer result. Yeah, yeah well, that's good enough. Okay. Yeah, so just pick one consequence. Okay, so it's going to cost extra. Sure. So, as you know, Cass owes quite a bit of money for this breach of contract. Okay. So he's financially motivated in this deal. So he normally, you know, for the information you're getting, it's probably a two-credit deal. He's going to negotiate for three, and you go back and forth and eventually settle on three. Okay. So what questions do you have for Cass about Skip Tracer? And you guys could all participate mm. in this conversation. I would like to know if the goal is to actually murder these people. Or if it's considered a game where it's like, yeah, we, we got the laser on you. That means you're dead. It's played with light guns, essentially. And the objective is just to tag the target. Okay, so it's not murder. But the light no, guns are game. real guns. That's often the case. A pistol does make specific skip tracer light guns, but also many people's just regular smart weapons have a light gun function built in. Some players use that. How like violent has it gotten in the past? It can get pretty rough. There have been injuries and deaths in the past, whether through accidents or just, you know, people getting into fights and running into traffic or whatever, like Pokemon Go, but worse. <laughs> but worse. <laughs> but once, with guns. <laughs> once somebody tags somebody with a gun, do they like bring them in after or anything like that? Or is it just like, okay, you're tagged? No, nope, it's just that's it. That's done. So what would be the motivation for trying to hide from these people? Well, you know that epistle is using this as an excuse to track you guys down so this in a normal situation this wouldn't actually be that scary but like, no it would be almost maybe fun for yeah. some people like yeah. if they weren't in a exactly uh, like a compromised yeah. situation it is a game that many people play because it is fun and mm -hmm. exciting but you know that epistle would use this to get information about you or just hope that an accident happens which again yeah. wouldn't be the first time how does the ar work <laughs> so how, how do you mean exactly like Going back to Pokemon Go, right? You need to have an actual like screen and point it at things to see it. So like, is it like on the gun? Is it glasses? Is it both things? It could be any combination thereof. Okay. People have individualized equipment that they've made for this. I was just wondering if maybe there was like a super official like one I think that most it, people I think have. it's just like AR is so ubiquitous that like almost every device 
like has some kind of built-in mm-hmm. AR. What and then some people like Bunk has like a, a specific AR visor. Right. Like, I was just wondering if there was like one for the game specifically. No. No, not necessarily. Are there any like off limits areas or is it like Ooh, anywhere it goes? No. Anywhere it goes. Well. That's what makes it exciting. Even outside of Vantal? Oh yeah, we could flee the country. Yeah, it probably doesn't come up as often. This is kind of where the game is played. And most people that are playing it are also playing it to earn their own points, right? So they're not going right. elsewhere because they need to be where other people are too to get their own points. Right. Do we get points for doing well, for hiding out? No. no. It's just for uh, catching bounties. But since we're technically in the game now, we could let technically go get bounties and get not points? Not really. Normally, it's other players that are tracking down other players yeah occasionally epistle does kind of special events where Mm. it's either like an actor or a drone or a digital target right you guys are essentially npcs in this game right are there other people being hunted besides us four yes what are they telling people why we deserve to be these like big targets i thought it was just kind of like a special event thing yeah how hard is it to become a skip tracer probably not that hard but to do well at it is hard can you just like download the app and, and just start like anyone can do it on the spot? Download the app, buy a gun, register. You probably have to be 18 or over. That's about it. So is there anything stopping us from just like all registering? We'd have to buy a gun from like, a pistol. <laughs> oh, right. You would have to get in touch with a <laughs> right. pistol and sign a contract. Okay. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You have to and reg- then like, on top of that, we would have like literal trackers on us for yeah. a pistol. Oh, right. Yeah. You probably have right. to register with your like DNA. I really did want to do like the hunt it becomes the hunter or whatever, but it's not going to work. I mean, it still can. We just don't get any points for it. Yeah, Yeah, we could just murder all the hunters. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Yeah. But I kind of wanted to hunt to the other bounties. I don't think that's how the game works, though. (laughs) No, I'm just saying we could do that. Yeah, Yeah, we shouldn't. But Speaking of other bounties, let's move on to Tiss. Tiss, can you tell us what Gene Slacks looks like? Absolutely. So Gene's dyed his hair blonde. He's wearing a tweed jacket with a nice button-up shirt underneath and he has a nice sharp crisp pair of slacks on in a charcoal gray (laughs) this is in another area of the park and you got a couple of your new neighbors standing around chatting with you Mm -hmm. you are going through the information that you got from your client looking at the people in the party seeing if any of these people match up why don't you roll research okay and we'll see how much info you know eight you can either get a little bit of information about three, or you can get everything about one of the top five skip tracers. I just want to get a lay of the land, so I think I'm going to do the three. Sure. The top five skip tracers currently are Hurt Me More is the leader. Concentrated Power of Will is second. <laughs> what the hell is with these names? <laughs> they're gamers. Yeah, they're, they're gamer tags or whatever. Becky Pulse is third. Girder 99 is fourth. And Chasing Waterfalls is fifth. Oh, how is there no, like, 420 or 69 in any of these 420, 69, Sephiroth. (laughs) Yeah. XX. No no scope. You'll get kind of surface detail about three of them. I'll let you guys invent surface detail about the fourth one. Nice. Who do you want surface detail of, of those five? Becky Pulse. Becky Pulse, you know, is one of the youngest players, especially in the highest echelons. She is a college student. So maybe Mm -hmm. (laughs) Cynthia might run into her, although she studies marine biology. And you know that one of her MOs is she moonlights as a quick box delivery person and uses that to gain access to people. So we can't ship anything through quick box. Or we could if we wanted to lure her out. Oh. (laughs) Who's next? Oh, second person. Second person is concentrated power of will. Yeah. You know that he primarily deals in the digital space. So he's hacking and AR and digital tracking of people. He usually only shows up in the real world when he absolutely has to. This is concerning. We're really going to have to go off the grid. We're literally, that's what we're doing. Yeah, but (laughs) that means I'm not allowed to check my social media. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) I have a lot of followers. Oh, no. Your phone's buzzing and you're like, I gotta check for a week. I'm a journalist. I'm supposed to stay like tapped into what's going on in the here and now. Yeah, you're also supposed to stay alive so you can report news. That comes second. True. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, most of the people probably are hitting up your Twitter to fucking find where you are. Mm. I think we should be the ones who make up the stuff for number one. Yeah. So let's do number four. Sure. So number four is Girder99. Girder 99 is a low-level executive for Cadabra Corp. Hmm. 
much of the legwork for Girder is done by his mooks and employees. Okay, so he just hires a bunch of people to <laughs> go out and do his dirty work? Yeah. All right. So he's not necessarily good. He just no, throws he's money a pay, at it. He's a pay-to-win kind of guy. Yeah, basically, he's a whale. Yeah. All right. Then, yeah, you guys can kind of invent some details, just surface details about the last player. It's a 87-year-old. Sure. Nice. <laughs> They're cybernetic then. <laughs> Ooh. If they're 87, they have and they're in first place. Can people have like an avatar body? In the digital world, absolutely. In the real world, though? Could there be like robots? We established that robots are quite rare. So I would say not impossible, but that would be pretty significant if this person was doing that. They'd have to be like, what, super rich? Super rich. But maybe that they are super rich. So they're number one. They don't have to have a job, so they just do this game all the time. I like that idea, though. It'd be cool getting them. We don't actually know anything about them because we literally just see their robot. And mm-hmm. they could have a different robot body every time, so. Ooh. Oh, man. We, we have to stab every this. robot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. Okay. So, hurt me more. The rumors about him are that he's actually quite an older gentleman. Or lady, we didn't say. Yeah. Don't know. Older person. Older person. Yep. Gentle them. Gentle them. I don't know if that's PC. <laughs> an older person who uses a robot avatar to do the legwork and to actually engage with other players. Mm-hmm. That's and neat. Other than that, we don't know too much about him, it sounds like. It's neat, but dangerous. Yeah, we just made like our worst enemy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, let's pop over to Olivia. I think, Olivia, you're admiring the foliage in this uh, Foil? park. Foliage? Foliage. Fo- foliage. 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 Foilish. <laughs> it's getting worse the more you're saying. Foy, it. <laughs> you're looking at trees and stuff. Yeah, that's good. Foliage. Your crows are in the tree here, and they're maybe at first you thought they might like being out in nature, but I think they're just as used to the city as you are. And you all feel a little out of place here. Yeah. This neighborhood is super nice. The individual rooms and the homes are bigger than anything you guys have stayed in before. Everything's clean and tidy. There's no garbage everywhere. Swanky. You guys are kind of fish out of water, at least from what you're used to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I first saw my room, I was like, this is bigger than my <laughs> van. <laughs> so, Christina, can you tell us what Olivia looks like in her cover? She's also dyed her hair blonde, <laughs> and it's going to be, it's like super straight, cut to the shoulders, bangs, and then just like a crisp white t-shirt and some khaki slacks. We said that it was some of your criminal contacts that helped you get here. Mm -hmm. I think we need to expand on that a little more. What did you have to give up? What favors did you call in in order to make this happen? I think actually Gassy Jack is the one who kind of helped me out. And even though, because I basically was like, I owe you a favor from the last one and I really messed it up. (laughs) So I was like, how about (laughs) I do you the biggest favor and probably something I, that's really bad. What, what is something that would really suck? A murder. He doesn't really deal in murder, though. That's why he would want you to do it. What, what is he dealing? Boosting cars, pickpocketing, like low-level crime stuff. Yeah, maybe you had to, like, boost a car from somebody that's, like, nice. That or from, like, like, the police impound lot or something. <laughs> well, we already did that. <laughs> <laughs> you say Gassy Jack doesn't normally do murder. Yeah. But maybe he's backed into a corner here he pissed off the wrong person Uh and he does need someone taken care of he needs a murder and that person lives here in in applewood terrace so that's why he was willing to get you in here sure that sounds good i mean that sounds terrible but (laughs) (laughs) but it sounds plausible why don't you roll hit the street just to see how well that negotiation went 10 baby okay so you get what you want plus you get a little extra you get either an intel or a gear Oh, I think he gives me a gear. Sure. A gun to murder. Yeah. An untraceable gun for murder. <laughs> so who's this person we need to moiter? They're like our, not across across the street neighbor, but like across and one over. So like they're pretty close by. Sure. And I would say it's Nightingale Robertson. A lot of bird names. <laughs> Is that a girl? Nightingale? Yes, in this case. And she's a single mother with three children. What, why is she so dangerous that she needs to be moitered? Maybe it's what she knows. Yeah. She's kind of like us in the terms that she looks clean cut, but she actually deals like in dirty stuff. Right. So like she's a runner, maybe. 
but like one of those runners who are like comes in their like big suburban van and like has their kids in the car and so nobody will pull her over. It's like on the PTA. She deals in the suburbs. Yeah, exactly. It's like the first season of Weeds. I was just going <laughs> to say. Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Nightingale Robertson, suburban runner for Gassy Jack, who maybe in this case really did a double turn on him. Wow. Sure. So it's maybe a little bit of revenge, maybe a little bit of just keeping her quiet because she knows too much. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Olivia, you have your little side goal now, I guess. Side quest. Side quest. Seems pretty big. Yeah. Medium quest. Seems pretty evil. Hey, you don't have to stay here if you don't want to. (laughs) Well, I'm I'm not going to help you murder someone. Let's open it up a little. He just needs you to make sure she's not going to talk. Yeah. Whether that's murder or some other way. That's what I'm saying. It's a bad. We don't, it's not necessarily murder. Right. It could just be a big threat. Mm -hmm. It could be breaking some legs. (laughs) Bunk, what are you up to in a backyard barbecue party? Practicing his English. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. I'm Mm -hmm. I'm trying to learn conversational English. Can I ask what you look like? So he's wearing a a white sweater that has like a high school logo (laughs) on it over a blue collared shirt and some nice black dress pants. Does it have elbow pads? The sweater? Yeah. He hasn't earned that yet. Oh, okay. (laughs) He needs to earn that. (laughs) Something to look forward to. It's a rite of passage. (laughs) He's very serious about his vandalisms. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, Bunk, you had done a little a little hacking, I guess. You would access a message board that is popular with skip tracers. Mm -hmm. And you had started spreading some disinformation to try to keep people off the off your trail. And I want to see how well that went. So can you please roll mind? 13. You have a bit of an advantage here going into this. You're able to put people off your trail a little bit, spread some disinformation, sow some confusion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let you borrow a move from the soldier book, Ooh. which is called Here's the Plan. And basically you guys get one of these cards and it Ooh. gives you plus one on all your rolls until you either fail a roll or go wildly off script. <laughs> oh, so like if we give up cover? Yeah. That's awesome. So that's just because there's so many like fake kind of like targets out there for these guys that yeah. chances of us getting away are a little bit better. Exactly. And the fact that we're going to just have to keep lying over and over and over again. So. <laughs> a little later at this party, you guys have reconvened. There's still a couple of your neighbors standing around chatting with you. And the camera comes in part way. We just hear the tail end of a really bad joke that someone has said. And one of your neighbors, who we haven't defined yet, who's this neighbor? What's he look like? What's they do? What's the deal? His name's Paul. I was literally going to say that. Okay. Well, then there you go. Perfect. <laughs> You're on the same mind wave. Yeah. Um, his name's Paul, and he is a hot tub repairman. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> You're in my head, man. <laughs> hey, we're in the suburbs. They're needed. Yeah. 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 Paul goes... And I said, that's not a sardine. That's my wife. And oof, the neighbors all laugh. <laughs> and I look down at the ground because my wife just died. Oh. <laughs> well, Paul doesn't know that yet. <laughs> oh, he will. <laughs> Do you, like, get upset with him? Be like, excuse me, that's really rude. My wife just died. No, I'm, I'm not trying to kill the mood. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to look like I'm sad, though. Okay. So, guys, what brings you to Applewood Terrace? Our family just needed a change of pace. We've been through some troubled times and we just need a fresh new start. My son thinks I can't take care of myself anymore. Oh. (laughs) Okay. That's not good conversation. He he looks a little confused by that statement. He goes, well, it's it's great that you're out and talking and uh, you're having a good time at the party. (laughs) Yep. It's good to meet you too. (laughs) That's great. I come for ling- learn English. <laughs> Do you have any hard boiled eggs? I hate this. Uh, <laughs> once, I what's come over. Its cover name again? Cecil. Cecil. Cecil, why don't you go inside? No, okay. He's your dad. You oh. just call him dad. Oh, yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's all over. Well, he doesn't remember that I'm his son. Lose your so, card. Lose he your remembers card. his own name. The cover's so. blown. Everybody <laughs> runs. <laughs> I'm just, this, that was out of character. 
Not really. Just because he's your dad doesn't mean you call him that. Doesn't That's mean you true. respect him enough to call well, him. Well, like that. I said, he doesn't remember that I'm his son, so oh, I have he... to call him Cecil because. Why he are you making his name. up like the worst backstory? <laughs> we have to like the hardest. Up. He's the one who's acting senile right now. <laughs> he's not acting. That's Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> it's just who he is. Method. <laughs> He's two levels deep now. Wait, he's method or he's a meth head? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hand in hand. Inclusive or. Yeah. I'm like, come on, Grandpa. Let's go look at the swings. I don't know what people do here. I say under my breath. <laughs> All right, sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> so while they're ushered off, I'll continue talking yep. to Paul. I'm like, so, Paul, how's the neighborhood here? We just got here, obviously, so I'm trying to get the lay of the land. Well, you know, it's it's... One of the nice things about working for Tranquility is they really take nice care of everybody. This is a nice place, very calm, very relaxed, no trouble. And he gives you kind of a little side eye. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all going to get along just fine. That's awesome. Hello, Paul. <laughs> Hi, what was your name again? I am Mr. NK. Nice to meet you, Mr. NK. Then he reaches out a hand to shake yours. I reach out a hand, palm facing down, my fingers outstretched, and I clasp onto his. <laughs> For the listener, this is all getting mimed in real time. <laughs> it's just as awkward you just, as it Do sounds. you just like grab his thumb and mm-hmm. kind of wiggle it around like a joystick? Mm-hmm. Yep, because nobody shakes hands in other countries. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Why don't we just do a... A fast talk roll, just whoever is the best one can do it. Nine. One of the things you've come to learn about Apollo Terrace is that the vast majority of people that live here work for Tranquility Resorts, the owners of the town. It's kind of a company town. There are exceptions, but the fact that you guys don't is noteworthy. So mm. People have started to pick up on that. And I'm just going to raise the like, or sorry, action clock by one. <laughs> is that all from him shaking his hand weird? <laughs> Hey, don't blame me for this. Slightly <laughs> suspicious behavior. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it is your fault. <laughs> Everybody said we're going deep undercover. <laughs> yeah, but... I had to choose my role on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm under a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah, but foreign people are regular people. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair point. <laughs> but... <laughs> I decided that in the country that where I come from, yes. we shake hands differently. Okay. And where are you from? Be you. That's none of your business. <laughs> Even though you're staying was. with us. Yeah. yeah. The Republic of Nunya. I need to know where to send you back. To. <laughs> <laughs> the <fucking> Nunya. <laughs> none your business. <laughs> That's very good. Uh, the place where I come from doesn't exist anymore. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Start. We're a real terminal over here. You can't really say you're an exchange student then. We're... <laughs> yeah, who are we getting back? Yeah. <laughs> who do we send over? <laughs> no, it's like there's like a service now where you can like rent an exchange student rent. from like corporations that like dissolve third world countries. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's exchange. terrible canon. <laughs> but not unlikely. Exchange students. <laughs> With, like, uh, uh, an umflot over the U. Students. Students. <laughs> Garrett and Olivia, you guys kind of wandered off towards the house. And on your way there, someone steps in front of you. So we've established your left neighbor. Mm-hmm. This is going to be your right neighbor. Okay. I think that's Gerald. Just like the song goes, Paul's to the left of me, Gerald's to the right. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am, stuck in the middle of the suburbs. <laughs> Let's do it, Gerald. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stuck in the suburbs of you. Gerald is there with his wife. His wife. His wife. Nadia. Nadia, thank you. Oh, hi, guys. Nice hi. to meet you. Hi. Hey, what brings you to the neighborhood? My son doesn't trust me to take care of myself anymore. <laughs> Pat Grandpa's hand. Hello. You're not there. <laughs> B- B-U-N-K in the background is going, hello. <laughs> I'm very far away. Across the yard. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Grandpa's not feeling well, so I'm just taking him back to the house. What's your name again, sir? Oh, my name's Gerald. This is my wife, Nadia. Hi. Hi. Cynthia. They seem intent on cornering you in conversation right now. Okay. If you're trying to avoid that. Yes. Maybe do an act under pressure. 
10. Holy moly. You play up Cecil's rapidly degenerating mind. So, so easy <laughs> to do. <laughs> yeah. Make a vague gesture towards his diaper area and say, we gotta go. Sorry. <laughs> diaper well, area. <laughs> I'm sorry. I really want to stay in chat, but we gotta take him away. Maybe I'll stop by with a casserole later. Oh, I say. yeah, okay. <laughs> we can chat then. They do not accost you any further. <laughs> So for those that remained at the party, anything more you want to do? Anybody else you want to talk to? Me to get the lay of the land or or avoid everybody at all costs? <laughs> um, I think I'm going to go inside and maybe make some cookies. You're good at talking to people, though. The party's dwindled. Those were kind of the only two, like, stragglers. So mm-hmm. my plan is to maybe, like, go door to door soon and then, like, be like, hey, yeah, well, we're new. I just wanted to say hi. Yeah, so you've made some cookies. <laughs> You're going to go knock on some doors. You kind of head down your street. Right opposite you mm-hmm. is vacant. Oh. To the opposite and right of you. That's Nightingale. Yeah. Are these guys in the know about your mission? No, but I'm just saying. Okay. So you knock on a door and a woman answers. Do you want to describe Nightingale a little bit? She's actually kind of small. You're kind of surprised considering how big of an SUV is out front. Hmm. She has curly hair, red hair. You can just hear kids screaming in the background, but she looks very soccer mom, but very tiny. Okay. Hello, I'm Jean. Oh, hi. I'm new to the neighborhood. I just thought I'd stop by and introduce myself. Oh, isn't that lovely? Brought some cookies along. I yeah. hear some kitties in the background. You see some like toys get tossed across <laughs> in, the, in the back, and she looks a little frazzled, like she needs to be taking care of these children. Oh, uh, that's great. Thank you. And she like looks behind her, and she's like... It's not a great time. Oh, that's okay. I just wanted to say hi. Oh, hi. Maybe maybe I'll see you around later. Yeah, sounds good. Why don't you do an assess? Let's okay. see what Nightingale's up to. Got an eight. So you can ask one of the questions. What do I notice despite an effort to conceal it? Yeah. Like, I just see something that, like, catches my eye. Yeah. You see a pile of empty quick box deliveries. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, I don't know if I need to head on to the next house unless you have nope. someone else you want to... Nope. I've good. kind of introduced myself yeah. to three people. <laughs> the limit good enough. that you can do. <laughs> I do make a note of the vacant house because that might be a getaway place to run off to. Maybe. I think we should maybe try to unlock that place when we can. Okay. Yeah, I could get to work doing that. That sounds good. Bunk will get his lock picking tools and he heads over to the vacant house. Sure. You head over to the vacant house. You find it is like a a keypad lock, but you're pretty good at this kind of stuff. You get it open with a little bit of hackery doodle. Is that what you call it? Mm -hmm. Hacker doodle. Hackery doodle. Hackery doodle? Mm -hmm. Yeah. These things are all Bluetooth, so. It's really just an empty house. You search it up and down, top floor, bottom floor. Looks like it's just vacant. Unless you want to find something interesting, you could roll for it. Don't want to find anything interesting necessarily, (laughs) but I might want to like set something out here for later. An escape bag or something like that. Yeah. We should have like a a to-go bag basically if we need to get out of here. Mm. Yeah. In the vacant house, Bunk is just going to place like a to-go bag in case shit goes down so he can grab it. It's just got, you know, some clothes, some extra clothes, some like money and some, uh, like temporary yep. phones. Sure. Yeah. You got your, your bucket bag. I think that's fine. Why don't you spend one gear and you have a little bucket bag ready to go in the uh, opposite adjacent, opposite adjacent empty house. Okay. Words are fine. Kitty corner. Is that what that is? I think kitty corner is diagonally. Oh, right. So I think yeah. Nightingale is kitty corner. Okay. Mm-hmm. I would like to do some surveillance. And I'll be taking the car out during the day to keep up cover that I'm working. Yeah. But what do you really do? Mm. Drive around. <laughs> yeah. Park at the vacant house. Go for pancakes. <laughs> That's not a very good <laughs> Yeah, so a few days pass. You guys pretend to go to work and pretend to go to school and pretend to enjoy the company of these neighbors that incessantly pester you with conversation. Pretend to yell at clouds. Pretend to yell at clouds. Maybe do yell at clouds. So you're doing some surveillance on Nightingale. Mm-hmm. And you see with pretty regular frequency, she gets quick box deliveries. And it's almost always the same person delivering. You see a 
pretty young looking girl. She's wearing a oversized gray sweater, must be like shorts or something underneath. You just see bare legs. She's got a bunch of like bangles and jangles on her. <laughs> no, bangles and jangles. Don't, I don't know what that means. <laughs> like jewelry. Yeah, okay. got it. Yeah, lots of little bracelets and necklaces and things like that. She jangles, jangles as she walks. Yeah. Bangles and jangles. Can I ask, when we were doing recon before, did we see pictures of any of these people? Yes, I think you would have. So having that girl go back and forth, could I say with some certainty that it might be number three? Becky Pulse. All the images you get of the best skip tracers, they're the best skip tracers for a reason, which mm-hmm. is that they're usually not easily seen or found. But you do have, you know, some blurry CCTV photos and stuff like that. Of yeah, them. I know she's young. Yeah, it's a pretty strong correlation. You can't say 100%, but you wouldn't be surprised. It could just be a coincidence she's in the area, but it's a very dangerous one. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, if you take care of Nightingale real quick, then no more deliveries will be coming. That's one of the things. So with Nightingale, do I notice that she leaves maybe the house at a certain time of the evening or anything like that? Yeah, you can pick out a pretty regular schedule for her when she goes to work and comes back. Work. Yeah, whatever where that work might be. Okay. Cecil and Jean... You have been invited to a poker night. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Can can you act a little more normal? (laughs) We'll see. We'll see what we need. Yeah, I have a I have a sit down with Garrett. (laughs) (laughs) Some extra IPs. You're doing well undercover, but maybe too well. Yeah, you're. You're making it harder for me. Oh, okay. You're trying to like blend into the neighborhood. You don't want any organization called on you to like pick you up and take you to a home. Right. Okay. Like a lost puppy. <laughs> okay. okay uh, who's hosting the poker night? Gerald. Gerald and Nadia. Nadia? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be exclusively talking to Nadia. <laughs> so you can do that voice. Oh, I don't remember it. <laughs> it's just I think high. it was just real high. Yeah. Real high. You're going to hit on her? No, that's weird. He just lost his wife. <laughs> Your daughter-in-law. Um, <laughs> yeah, like literally a week ago. <laughs> well, Cecil might hit on him. All right, so it sounds like you're accepting the invitation. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll go. Cool. Bunk, what do you want to be up to? I need to get away from all of this, I think. <laughs> so Bunk is going to hop on his bike and, and go for a ride around the neighborhood just to kind of like scope the whole area out, get a, get a feel of the neighborhood and blow off some steam. Sounds good. Okay, let's resolve the poker night real quick. Okay. okay. All in. <laughs> Roll for it. Hold. Full house. So you guys head over to poker night. Some of the neighbors here you've already met, like Paul. Other ones you have not. And you get deep into a few games. Beers have been passed around. Nachos, various snacks and goodies. Oh. <laughs> Do you guys play poker regularly? Do you think you're any good at it? Um, regardless, I'm trying to play the middle. I'm trying to right. neither win nor lose. Right. Garrett is going to say that he forgot his glasses and can't see the cards and use it as an opportunity to like eavesdrop and snoop around on people while they're playing. Sure. So you're trying to cheat? No, I'm not even going to play. I can't play because I forgot my glasses. So you're just there to enjoy the snacks? So why don't you do an assess roll? Six? Six? Yeah. Yay, our first failure. Six is a failure. Did you use your your ongoing plus one? Yes, I did. Oh, no. I think you lose that then. Yes, I did. You do. You are sitting off on the corner, looking around, watching, and you see two things. Well, actually, you see one thing. This will see the other thing. Garrett, you are sitting off on the side and you can peek into the kitchen okay and you see nadia there she's making some snacks for the table and you see that she is assisted by a robotic butler oh my god i am oh my god (laughs) (laughs) which is very cool but maybe also a little concerning given the information you have about top skip tracer hurt me more we haven't really talked about robots yet in this campaign so what does a vantal robot look like is it super humanoid or? He's got to look like that, like really stereotypical, 
like Jarvis the butler kind of like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a motionless face. Yeah. Even just like a slit for eyes or something. So it'd have like a, just a camera that scopes back and forth, like a red dot or whatever. Yeah. Like a really like minimalist kind of robot. Kind of like a Cylon eye. That's what I'm picturing. So it's a lot more robot. It's not very humanoid. That's what I'm picturing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sounds good. And it stomps out of the kitchen with a, a tray of drinks and it heads over to Garrett. Or I hide behind my cards. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it heads over to Garrett and, uh, would you like a drink, sir? Uh, yes. Do you have any ginger ale? Affirmative. <laughs> Affirmative. Dispensing ginger ale. <laughs> <laughs> Open up. <laughs> See, it's like adorable in its utilitarianism. <laughs> it kind of awkwardly and jerkily hands you a drink and you feel like it lingers in your presence a little longer than it should have. And then it walks off to the next group of people. Oh, boy. You just got drugged. I'm going to pop up that action clock by one. <gasps> no! <laughs> You think if I had asked for a different drink, it would have worked yeah, out? Probably, uh, yeah, probably. No, ginger ale was the code word, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he looked up your bio and he knows that Garrett <laughs> likes ginger ale. Tiss, you are playing one of the other players and there's somebody who is just sweeping house. He's doing so well that a lot of people are almost ready to give up out of frustration. He's wearing like one of those newsboy caps. He looks middle-aged, has a kind of Pacific Islander uh, skin tone and uh, build. And you see he's got a bunch of tattoos on his neck and arms. And they're all like different like warning symbols, like an old, like high voltage and danger mm. do not open and warranty void if sealed broken and things like that. Yeah, he's just totally destroying people. You said you're kind of playing the middle. Are you engaging this person? Or are you trying to avoid notice? I'm trying to avoid notice, but I'm just more often than not unfolding. Yeah. But then I'll just like occasionally lose a hand. Like I know I'm just here to basically <laughs> act as a cover and probably lose my money and not win. <laughs> sure. But. So you see this person totally destroyed after the party. You see him. He gets into a, a cab, mm -hmm. like a cab that he is driving, I should say. Okay. So he's a cab driver. He's a cab driver and drives off. Is he leaving the neighborhood? Yeah. So I mentioned the terrace is kind of five different little ovoids. Mm -hmm. He's moving on to the next one. Okay. So he still lives in like the complex. Presumably. Okay. Hmm. So sure. It didn't go great, but it didn't go the worst. It could have either. Bunk. You're biking through town, trying to get some fresh air, gather your thoughts a little, practice your English. <laughs> <laughs> You're making your way down row after row of, carefully arranged neighborhood. And I think what kind of strikes you the most about this compared to what you're used to in Vantel is how samey everything is. Same houses, same cars. Most people have the same schedule because they all work for tranquility. Same kind of sterile smiles that they give you and wave as you pass by. You pass by a park and there's some children chasing each other around the monkey bars, firing beams of harmless light from the Pistol Smart toys, I guess. Oh, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> just toy versions of uh, uh, actual guns. Later on, you pass by a second park, and at first you don't notice anything, perhaps numbed by the sameness of the rest of your trip, but then you do a double take. You see something of interest. There are two kids here as well, a boy and a girl playing, but there's also a woman watching them from a nearby bench, and you recognize this woman. This woman is your sister. Please describe sister. My sister is a young woman uh, around mid-20s, I guess you wouldn't really consider her having like a light or dark complexion. She's somewhere in the middle and got long, dark hair and dark eyes. And I think the thing that would strike Bunk the most is that she just looks like really happy. And I think probably the last time he saw her, A, she didn't have children. So this is really new to Bunk. And B, she was kind of living and hiding and not really happy with her life. So this is like a big big shock to bunk and i think he'd probably like slow down and maybe like look around to see if there's anybody like following him or anything like check around to see if maybe he could potentially go talk to her what's her name blink blink cool blink and bunk you're scoping out the park other than your sister being here it seems to be the same as every other park you don't see anything that would deter you 
from approaching. But as you do, you stop the bike and you start to step off. Mm -hmm. But then something happens. Your bike suddenly goes dead. The AR street signs flicker off. Your vision flashes and goes wavy for a split second, like when you degauss a CRT monitor. There's a distant dull pain where your neural interface is. And actually, since you have damaging on your neural interface, let's do that. You take one harm as there's this pain in the back of your head. You've experienced this before. It's what happens when you're at the epicenter of a blackout. Normally it passes in a moment, but when your vision returns, something feels off. The colors seem muted and desaturated. And most concerningly, there's something else here, standing beside the bench where your sister sits. A tall human figure, shimmering slightly with a bluish light, but grainy and lacking detail, like a low-res image that's been posted and screenshotted and filtered and re-uploaded over and over again. It seems to acknowledge you, but then quickly as it appeared, it disappears and the scene returns to normal. The evening sky returns, the street signs spring back on, and your visor posts a series of error messages as it reboots. Still shocked, you watch as we see your sister suddenly shiver. She pulls the neck of her sweater over her chin, calls her children towards her, and walks away. Bunk is just like thoroughly freaked out by this happening, and I think... Obviously, he doesn't know what just happened, but he doesn't want to risk anything else happening, and he's just going to drive away. You drive off. We see that your sister turn the corner and walk down the street, and we'll continue in two weeks. Thanks for listening to The House of Bob. Artwork was created by Trevor, Cosmic Amazing on Instagram. Audio production is provided by Astronomic Audio. Music is produced by John R. Julius and licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. If you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe for more content. Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on social media and join our Discord server. Blackout is made possible by our amazing Patreon supporters. Ray Kearney, Tom Wesley, Rob, Blucket12, Jessica, Kieran Duffy, Mike of the Tales from the Glass Guarded World podcast, Sylvia Douglas, Luke Conroy, and Volt. If you'd like to be a part of making this podcast possible, please visit patreon.com slash the house of Bob. Oh, uh, God, that's the worst. <laughs> diaper. Well, and you rewarded it, so... <laughs> the dice look, rewarded it. Look forward to more. <laughs> Yell into diaper play, here we go. Oh, God. Oh, uh, uh. <laughs>